Now we're going to the White House where Jay Carney is answering <laughs> questions on Benghazi. Thank you. A lot, of go a lot of breaking news on Capitol Hill today between Eric Holder and Jay Carney. And you heard the press corps pressing him release the emails about Benghazi. Release the emails that the State Department sent and the White House responded to on how those talking points got changed. Why don't you? You'd like to release them selectively. Why not release all of them? We don't have answers to that, but Steve Hayes is next. Willing to release the email, so it's, it's all sure. so benign. No, as I, I didn't mean to. I, I did mean to. I just I forgot the comment to go into the second part. I mean, the it's all benign and a part of the agency process, as you described. Let the country take a look at. Uh, in our cooperation with the investigations and uh, oversight by Congress in this, we have provided an extraordinary amount of information, uh, thousands and thousands of documents. We have provided uh, testimony by senior officials repeatedly in hearings and uh, in person, in uh, you know, other, other forms of uh, testimony. Uh, we have provided to the relevant committees as well as leadership and staff the very emails that we're talking about. And that is, uh, was a, a, a concession, a unique concession to a long-standing position held by administrations of both parties going back years that internal deliberations uh, are not something that we, you know, divulge or make public. Mm, unless they find them particularly helpful, because at least one email was, e was leaked. Uh, the White House moments ago taking new questions on these changes to the Benghazi talking points. That's what led Susan Rice to go out there and tell America uh, a story that we now know wasn't true in the days after the attack on our consulate in Benghazi, Libya, 9-11 of 2012. You just heard Major Garrett now of CBS News asking why the White House doesn't just release all the emails that went back and forth on the issue of those talking points, which have been released to some in some forums and one here, one there. Just release them if there's nothing to hide. And you heard Jay Carney's response. Steve Hayes asked the same thing in his column today. He's a senior writer at the Weekly Standard and a Fox News contributor. And Steve broke uh, the story of these talking points and how heavily involved the State Department and the White House were um, a week and a half ago. And so now what happened in the wake of your reporting, Steve, uh, where you said, look, Victoria Newland's fingerprints were all over this from the State Department saying, still not good enough, want this stuff out, no, you were not there yet, building leadership, not satisfied. And then finally the White House said, we're having a meeting on Saturday morning and we're going to resolve all this. And then uh, the following Friday we saw John Carl of ABC News issue a similar report, although he tried to say more about the White House involvement. The White House leaks one email to CNN, uh, Jake Tapper, trying to make Ben Rhodes look, look better, suggesting he didn't say do everything State Department says. He just said, let's get together and discuss it. And, and the question is, all right, OK, OK, that may have all happened. Release the emails. Release the emails. Let us see the process. Why, why right. can't we see it now? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the big question right now. I mean, Jay Carney was complaining last Friday about selectively leaking emails and, and things taken out of context. Um, there's one way for the White House to solve that, and that's to release the emails. I understand there are about 100 pages of emails that were provided to Capitol Hill um, in, in sort of a, uh, a short session where they could be read, uh, looked at, examined. Um, why not release them all? I mean, Jay Carney has been up telling the American people not only in the past couple weeks, but basically for the past six, eight months, that the White House wants nothing more than to have the whole story told. Well, one way to make sure that that happens is to release these emails. And I would say not just the emails. The president the other day made reference to his presidential daily briefs and claimed that they were consistent with what we had heard, what we'd seen in the talking points and what we heard from Susan Rice. I find that hard to believe. Maybe he's telling the truth, but there's one way for us to find out. Release those. Release the redacted transcripts from FBI interviews of survivors. If you have things that would affect the investigation, Redact them. Don't share them with us. But I think those survivors have things that we'd like to know. There's a CIA memo drafted on September 12th by the CIA's station chief in Libya, the top intelligence official on the ground in Libya. I would think he's an authority on what happened there and who was involved. Release that memo. Redact it if you need to. Yeah. There's a lot of documents that would help us tell this whole story. I, for one, would like to see them. Jay Carney, apparently in the White House, don't want us to. Whatever, whatever Ben Rhodes did or did not say in the course of this exchange, and, and the email suggests he said, we need to resolve this in a way that respects all of the relevant equities, particularly the investigation. So he wasn't saying discount Victoria Newland at State. He was saying we've got to resolve all of the relevant equities. 
Um, yeah, and, they and had if a I meeting, just make didn't a... they, at the White House? I mean, involving White House personnel that Saturday morning. They did. They had the meeting on the morning of September 15th, and some of it was over video conference. Some of it was people meeting in person. But this was clearly discussed. I mean, there was a, a series of emails the night before that suggested it would be discussed in this deputies committee meeting, and then uh, an email that I reported on uh, after the deputies committee meeting to Susan Rice, in which uh, she was told, in effect, what had happened at the deputies committee meeting in broad terms, and suggested that the White House and the State Department would further coordinate their efforts as she prepared herself for her appearances on the Sunday show. And then we have this, the, the graphic, showing, you know, if, if Ben Rose and the White House were so concerned about only sticking to what the CIA said about the investigation and not State Department's concerns, then how do we wind up with the CIA initial draft that was three, four times longer than the final draft. I mean, you know, if the White House really didn't want its fingerprints on it, or they really didn't want any changes that would affect what the CIA was saying, how do we wind up with this? Quick answer, Steve. Right. I mean, and basically, if you look at the one on the right, it's essentially substance free. I mean, it just doesn't actually say much other than the things that are convenient for the administration as it told its story to the American people. Steve Hayes, thank you.